Good day, welcome to OTFI, and you're watching what is now a completely different video to what I recorded, edited, and fully uploaded to YouTube this morning, which was a full laptop buyer's guide from start to finish, explaining every component, everything you need to look out for, and then I thought, you know what, Neil, what a waste of time that was. Why don't you just show people some laptops that are on the market now and say, if you've got this money, buy that. <laughs> Isn't that a lot easier? Aye. So here we are. Reed, what am I doing this for? Well, just before I get started, there's always a small subset of my subscriber base who get a bit agitated and upset when I do hardware videos because they subscribe for the card tips and tricks and tutorials. It's fine. Perfectly understandable. Uh, but what you've got to understand, you don't have to understand, I'm, I'm going to do it anyway, is that there is a huge amount of people that come by my channel every single day. Email me comments on the videos every single day asking for credible advice on what hardware to buy for use with 3D CAD, whether it be for schoolwork, studies, uh, work, home use, uh, home office use, I guess. There's just not enough credible advice out there from the bigger tech channels that dwarf mine. And unfortunately, those are the guys that get sent all the review samples. These manufacturers, they, for some reason, prefer to send their laptops in front of lots of eyes rather than the right eyes. So uh, it doesn't matter. I can still look at these specs and I can give you an absolute stone guarantee of whether or not a laptop will perform to your satisfaction and whether or not it will do you proud. You reckon that's what people should do for me, do you, Gary? Do me proud? So I don't need these laptops in front of me to tell you that they'll be perfect for Inventor. I've had very similar specs of all of these laptops in front of me before, and I can tell you with an absolute stone guarantee whether or not they will be good enough for the job or not. So first on the list, right, we're, we're, this is sort of a mid-range kind of uh, modest budget selection of laptops rather than, hey, if you've got three grand, go out and buy one of these. No, these are sort of mid-range, which uh, unfortunately the mid-range is the new entry level. Uh, a couple of years ago, you know, this laptop here at $1,000, this would be sort of mid-range. This is now kind of entry-level price in today's market. The market's completely changed in the last couple of years. But this one here, the Acer Predator Helios 300. Now, you might be looking at this going, well, it's for gaming, you absolute pleb. Why would I buy this for work? Doesn't matter. These days with 3D card, especially Autodesk Inventor, which this channel is focused on, like the Fusion 360, in fact, most of Autodesk's software that utilize their OGS, which is their one graphic system engine, they're fine with gaming cards, absolutely fine with them. In fact, Autodesk do support gaming cards with Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360. They're just not certified, but they do support them. It's a ma massive common misconception. So gaming laptops are absolutely fine and you can get a lot more laptop, a absolute metric shit ton more laptop for your money than you can do if you went to Dell or HP and went for Precision or a ZBook. So this one here, this laptop here has recently come out in the market. It might have even been today or this week at least. And it's an absolute stonking deal if you can get away with the absolute ghastly looks of it. It does look pretty hideous. If you're going on site, if you're a contractor and you're going on site with this, you might get some funny looks from the IT guys of the site that you're attending. You'll be looking at you with that laptop and going, mate, you're not plugging that into my network. No way, Jose. <laughs> I don't know. If you're just using it in your own home office, absolutely fine. If you're taking this on site, uh, you might have to go for another one. I, for one, certainly would not take this on site for professional use. But looking at its specs, every single one of its specs is on the money for Inventor, starting with the CPU. It comes with an Intel Core i7 7700HQ, which is a top-of-the-line KB Lake i7. It's one short of the 7820HK. Uh, this one here, you can't overclock it, but it's got a it's got a pretty good clock speed, up to 3.8 gigahertz, which in a laptop chassis with limited cooling, that's as much as you want to be at before the laptop starts sounding like a jet engine taken off of an aircraft carrier. So uh, that's that's absolutely on the money. This is the sweet spot for laptops running Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360. You want to go for 7700 HQ. The graphics card in here is a GTX 1060. It doesn't matter if it's a 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, Titan X, Vega. It doesn't matter. Inventor does not use CUDA cores, it does not use the GPU's clock speed, it does not utilize the GPU's power. What it does use is the VRAM. It has 6 gig of VRAM. It has it in oodles. So if 6 gig of VRAM is going to have you covered for days, you're not going to hit that VRAM limit anytime soon. In terms of its size, it's the 15-inch chassis. So for some people, they're going to need to be quite conscious of the size of the laptop for weight, for carrying it around. Some people might not matter, but you can buy this laptop in a 17-inch form factor, which gives you a bigger screen. I've heard the screen's not so good. We don't care. It's 3D CAD. We don't care. Why not? At the end of the day, you spit out a black and white bit of paper. That's our end result in most cases. And any colors and textures that we use are predefined in the software, so we do not need color accuracy uh, in uh, in our software. So the screen quality, if it's not color accurate, we don't care. Not for our work anyway. 
It's a 1080p screen, that's fine. My laptop that I use, which is an Alienware 17, is a 4K screen. I'll tell you what, I only use it in 4K about 10% of the time. I cannot work in 4K. The applications get smashed to high heaven in 4K. So I just run it in 1080p. The system RAM, you do not, it doesn't matter what laptop you go for, if you're going for 3D card or any kind of, of any kind of card work, this day and age, do not under any circumstances go for anything less than 16 gig of RAM. They shouldn't really be building laptops of this kind of caliber with eight gig of RAM in, but they're on the market all over the place. They're, they're littering. In fact, I'd go as far as to say polluting the market with eight gig of RAM laptops. The same goes for laptops and desktops with mechanical drives in. So 16 gig of RAM is absolutely perfect. This also comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD. It's probably at the lower end of the solid state drives, but for $1,000, this is a stonking deal. And I'm gonna have to apologize that there's a, there's a mixture of kind of US dollars and UK pounds and currencies and stuff across here. Uh, so that's that one. This here, I, I haven't tested it, but looking at the specs, I can tell you if you buy this, Inventor will not struggle, Fusion 360 will not struggle. But in terms of system RAM, VRAM, CPU, the hard disk speed, the hard disk capacity, this is an absolute winning deal. I would highly recommend you go for this one if you are just using it for homework, but think again if you're going on site with it. Right, the second one in the list, this one comes in at a thousand UK pounds, which again, unfortunately, you can't get much cheaper than that. Anything roughly below 800 pounds mark and you're starting to get into the consumer kind of, I just like to surf the web kind of a laptop which is no good for anything 3D CAD related. So this is at the lower end of what I would deem acceptable. This is in a 17-inch form factor. It's a gigabyte. It looks much more professional than the Acer Predator. Uh, I would be quite happy to take this on site. Keyboard looks questionable. I'm not here to tell you whether or not the keyboard's comfortable or whether the trackpad's functional. I can't do that without the thing in my hands, but what I can tell you is what the specs are going to perform like in 3D CAD, which for some people that's all that matters. So this comes equipped with the exact same CPU, the 7700HQ. So in terms of raw performance power, this will perform identically uh, to the last one. It has 16 gig of system RAM, just like the last one. The solid state drive, the boot drive is slightly smaller and it's only, an, it's only a SATA uh, SSD, whereas the other one I think was a PCI Express SSD, but at this price point, I wouldn't get hung up on that at all. Uh, but if 128 gig boot drive is going to be possibly too small, if you've got a lot of large applications to load on it, well, you can offload them to a secondary uh, mechanical drive, which comes with the laptop, which might be an idea. But if you think that might be a problem, then avoid this one. But this does come with a GTX 1050, which is a powerful enough graphics card. It's 10 series. It's the new Pascal graphics cards. Uh, but more importantly, it's the 4 gig of VRAM variant of 1050. Do not, under any circumstances, get a laptop for 3D card with a graphics card with two gig of VRAM. Uh, it also has USB 3.1, comes with Windows 10, a thousand pounds, 17 inch form factor, gigabyte saber. This is a winning laptop all round for a bargain, I'd say. Right, the third one, gigabyte again, fifth, this is the 15 inch form factor, P55W. This comes in again, same CPU, I'm keeping it simple, 7700 HQ. Winning CPU, go for that all day long. This one comes, however, with 6 gig of VRAM, just like the Acer Predator, so this one is going to win for you all day long. GTX 1060 graphics card, 16 gig of system RAM, that's got you covered. It's pretty much the exact same spec as the uh, as the Acer, but it comes in at a £1,400 price point. But this is $1,000 in UK money. We tend to pay a bit more. For some reason, I have no idea why. So this, although it's the exact same spec as the Acer, this one is a lot more professional looking. I would be more happy to take this one on site than the Acer. But in terms of raw specs, it's exactly the same as the first one that I was talking about. But again, absolutely perfect for Autodesk and Vendor. Specs all around. Nothing's going to bottleneck you whatsoever with this laptop here. Right, if your budget is a bit tight, just flashed up a couple of other laptops here, which I'm, I can't really strongly recommend, but if you are on a really tight budget, then you could potentially go for something of an older generation. So say for example, it coming in at 900 pounds, we've got the previous generation of MSI laptops with the GTX 970, the Maxwell range of graphics card. So this has three gig of VRAM. I've been sure to not recommend anything with two gig of VRAM. Uh, however, it is only a 14 inch laptop, so the screen is gonna be quite small. You might get away with 14 inch, 13 inch, absolutely not. But this is the 6700 HQ, which is the Skylake variant of the uh, of the i7, of the 7700 HQ in the previous laptops. This is the 6700 HQ. Uh, it comes with the 970M, three gigabyte VRAM, it's 128 gig boot drive, solid state drive, which is PCI Express NVMe. It's gonna be pretty nippy. 
uh, one terabyte mechanical drive. It does only have eight gig of system RAM though. So this is where you start to make compromises. It's starting to go down the price range. You start to compromise on certain features. And for this laptop here, you're compromising on chassis size and also system RAM as well for 900 pounds. So unless you're absolutely stretched and you can't go anything more than 900 pound, then see if you can get something of that kind of spec, maybe a, a slightly different brand that doesn't have the premium of MSI, uh, which can get 16 gig of system RAM in. But that spec there with 16 gig of system RAM in would be pretty, pretty nippy, pretty nice for Autodesk and Vendor. And then finally, I've just flashed up a Dell one actually, because Dell get a quite a lot of stick, but I actually really like Dell. I've had Dells for a long time. I've currently got an Alienware, all the offices I've ever worked in, I've only ever bought Dells. And I'm pretty happy with them. A lot of people have got a lot of bad experiences with Dell, but this is a stunning deal. It's an Inspiron 15 7000, classed as a gaming laptop. I wish they wouldn't do that, but it does come with a 7700HQ. Same CPU as all the previous laptops, Windows 10, 16 gig of DDR4 uh, system RAM. It comes with dual drives, 128 gig solid state drive with a mechanical one terabyte secondary hard drive, exactly the same as all the other laptops, except this one's slightly smaller. And it also comes with a GTX 1050 Ti with four gig of video RAM, 15 inch chassis with a 1080p display. Coming in at 1,049 UK pounds, a bargain at half the price, governor. I would say this one is pretty good as well. Uh, and I quite like the design as well. They haven't went over the top with the gaming theme, although it does have red accents. I actually quite like that. I actually quite like that. I'd be happy to take that on site. Uh, the slight, you know, the, the red accent on the Dell, it's not too over the top. The red grills, again, not too over the top. In terms of input and output, in terms of ports, plenty of USB ports, plenty of connectivity. It's got an SD card reader by the looks of it, port number nine. Yeah, media card reader, USB 3 port, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI output. Not too bad, not too bad. So that's a pretty good deal for the Dell as well. So anyway, either way, if you don't go for any of these laptops or if you're in a country where none of these laptops are available, these are the kind of specs that you want to be going for in today's market. This kind of advice will always go out of date pretty quickly. It's just the way things go. Uh, new hardware comes out all the time. All the vendors refresh their lineups and bring out new hardware. So as of today, this is what I would highly recommend you go for. If this is your kind of budget, you can spend twice, three times, four times this cost on a laptop and only get marginal better performance in 3D CAD. Uh, but either way, either way, that's what I'm saying is good to go for today. If you're in the market for a laptop, I highly recommend these lot if this is where your budget is at. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Maybe one day I'll be able to get my hands on these things and, uh, and show you them benched on my 20, 20 however many point stress test I've got for Inventor. I haven't done it in a while, uh, but I do have a suite or a series of very, very intensive benchmark, real world benchmarks that I run Inventor through on hardware to see uh, how hardware performs on real world tests. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some of these onto that at some point soon. Anyway, thanks very much guys. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, hit that like button and then I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.